To some, they're creepy and crawly. To others, they're buzzy and beautiful. Whatever your feelings about insects, they are the humming undercurrent to life on Earth. And without them, our world would grind to a halt. That's according to biologist Dave Goulson, author of Silent Earth, Averting the Insect Apocalypse. His book is both a love letter to insects and a wake-up call about their devastating decline. The French translation has just come out, and Dave Goulson joins us by Skype to talk about it. Uh, Professor Goulson, it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, can you maybe start by just talking about your love for insects uh, and how it began? You describe in your book that it started quite early on. Yeah, I when I was just five or six years old, for whatever reason, I became interested in, in insects. And uh, one of my earliest memories is, is collecting caterpillars that I found on some weeds on the edge of the school playground when I was at primary school. And I put them in my lunchbox and took them home. And, uh, reared them up and they hatched eventually into these beautiful moths and I, I was I thought it was magic and I, I guess I've been slightly obsessed ever since. In addition to being magical as you described can you explain why insects are important maybe for people who think that they're a little bit disgusting? Yeah I, I, my mission in life these days is to try and persuade people to love insects but it's an uphill battle sometimes. Um, I mean insects are incredibly important they make up the the bulk of life on Earth in terms of numbers of species. Uh, they're food for a very large number of, of birds and bats and freshwater fish, lizards and so on. Um, so if the insects disappear, then those creatures will go. And they, they perform a, a huge number of uh, functions in ecosystems, things like recycling uh, dead material, cow pats, trees, leaves, keeping the soil healthy. and of course, they pollinate. Um, three quarters of the crops we grow in the world wouldn't give a good harvest without insect pollinators of one type or another. So we really depend upon our insects, whether we know it or not. And what are the signs that we're heading to what you call an insect apocalypse? Just how bad is the situation? Well, uh, the, the evidence we have suggests that, that Basically, insect populations have been declining for, for many decades. Um, some of the most alarming studies, for example, there was one from Germany, which uh, found that flying insect numbers had uh, fallen by 76% in the last 26 years. So three quarters of the, the insects in Germany seem to have vanished. Um, since I was a kid collecting those caterpillars, um, butterfly populations in the UK have fallen by about 50 percent. Um, there are lots of other pieces of evidence too. They're patchy and we don't have good data from the tropics where probably the majority of insect species live. But nonetheless, it's pretty clear that there is some kind of crisis in the insect world. And what are the main factors causing that crisis? Well, it, it's, habitat loss is still a, a, a big one, particularly in the tropics where forests are being cleared and replaced with, with agricultural crops like palm oil and soybean or cattle ranching. Um, and in the developed world, farming has been changing uh, for at least 80 years, uh, became much more industrialized and many more pesticides are used today than used to be used. Uh, and many of these pesticides we spray are designed to kill insects. So perhaps we shouldn't be surprised that insects aren't thriving, poor things. And as you said, agriculture is one of the leading causes of the problem, but don't we need pesticides to a certain extent to have enough, to produce enough food uh, to, to feed the planet? Um, how do you balance those two concerns? Yeah, I mean, if, of course we need farming and we, we need to be very careful to ensure that, that people have enough food. Um, but actually the whole food production system is, is hugely inefficient. Um, if, if we wasted less food, um, we currently waste about a third of all the food that's grown in the world. And we ate a lot less meat, which is just not a very efficient way of feeding people. Then we could have a farming system with far greatly reduced pesticide use or potentially no pesticides at all uh, and still have plenty of food to feed everybody. And one of the things I love about your book is that it's very solutions focused. The last chapter uh, is all about what we can do to take action. Uh, it lists ideas at the government policy level, but also the individual level. Uh, could we maybe start with policy? What are some of the things that governments should be doing? Well, I, I'd love to see um, a, a reform of the farming system to discourage farmers from 
uh, using so many pesticides and to encourage um, them to use alternative approaches to, to managing pests. Uh, that would be something really simple that governments could do. But also we need more pro proper protection of nature reserves. We need to clean up our rivers and at the moment. Um, uh, raw sewage is being dumped into many rivers in the UK, for example, which is catastrophic for insect life, a lot of which lives in, in fresh water. So there are lots of things governments could do, but there's also lots that people can do, that individuals, uh, if you have any kind of garden, then make it insect friendly, stop using pesticides, dig a little pond, grow some wildflowers, don't mow the lawn too often. Really simple stuff, and it's amazing how much life will come and live in your garden. And that's something that maybe people can do if they if they have a garden. What about people who live in apartment buildings or in big cities? Well, even on a balcony, if you if you grow some bee friendly wildflowers, maybe some herbs, things like marjoram, chives, sage, rosemary, and so on, um, they're all really attractive to pollinators. And it's amazing how even on a balcony on the tenth floor of a block of flats, um, the the bees will sniff the, sniff them out if you grow them some flowers. Um, or the alternative is, is get involved in, in local campaigns to get your green spaces in cities uh, managed in a more wildlife friendly way. We, ha we have lots of parks and often they're mown, the, the whole park is mown over and over again. And perhaps some of that could be set aside as a wildflower meadow, um, uh, which thankfully a lot of councils are starting to do these days. And, and that would, would help. And you mentioned bees, they've gotten a lot of attention and many people do realize now that they're important as pollinators. Are there maybe other species that we don't hear about as much that we should also be paying special attention to? Yeah, it's, it's actually a bit of a shame. I love bees, they're my kind of speciality, but nonetheless, um, I, I think it's important that we recognize that bees aren't the only insects that do something useful. Um, and in fact, even just pollination is done by butterflies, moths, wasps, beetles, uh, uh, lots of flies. There's a whole host of insects involved in pollinating uh, crops. Um, and just to give one particular example, chocolate, which almost all of us love, is pollinated by a tiny little fly, not by a, a bee. So if it weren't for these, these flies, we wouldn't have chocolate. Um, but we should also remember that insects are doing lots of other stuff. It isn't just pollination, you know, unglamorous jobs like the dung beetle that clears away cow pad, which, um, you know, is something we take for granted, but actually it's really important that somebody does that. I'm definitely going to think about flies and thank them the next time uh, I have some chocolate. Uh, Dave Goulson, thank you so much. I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there, but thank you so much uh, for joining us today here on France 24. That's biologist Dave Goulson, author of Silent Earth, Averting the Insect Apocalypse. His, his book is now available in French as well as in English.